That's what we want. Okay, so the answer is yes, we are recording. Uh, the second thing is we're going to go down and find myself because uh, we're going to change the host to me so I can share my screen with you guys. There we go. The host right there. Change the host to Reno guys. Yes. And I got it. Should be able to share my screen. We're gonna go right here. Okay, it should come up. There you go. So you should see fixer upper agent. So what I'd like to do first, uh, Larry Gould, give me a thumbs up on the audio, please. We're good? Good. So what we're gonna do is, uh, first of all, we are not going to put on an FHA 203K class. Excellent. Okay. So we're going to talk about practical information that can help you sell existing properties, older properties, fixer uppers, any property really. And it's not the old time perception of 203K properties, which were always, you know, vacant for five years with the kids throwing stones through the windows and nasty properties with bad borrowers that never got closed. We're not going to talk about that. We're gonna talk about things that will help you practically and substantively that can help you do a few more properties this year. Uh, and, and I think everybody's interested in that. So uh, for background, uh, Jim was right. I got in the business a very long time ago. <laughs> uh, I tripped over a renovation loan in 1988. And to make a very long story short, I found a solution to affordable home ownership. And, and to tell that story quickly, and, and I know you've heard it a million times already, but uh, my brother's an attorney. He had a uh, property in Newark, New Jersey. He calls me up one day. I was a branch manager at a, a little mortgage company in New Jersey in 88. He calls me up one day. He says, Jim, I sold that property in Newark to a lady and, uh, and you got to get her the mortgage. Well, I knew the property and I knew I was going to be in a lot of trouble. And it was because it took six months to close. Okay. So immediately, long story short, I'm the bad guy. Everybody's mad at me. Right. Of course. But we got to the closing table. And about three months later, the lady who bought the house called me. And so this is 1988. Right. So I get a pink slip across my desk. Ladies on the phone. I figure I'm going to take a beating for something else. So instead of taking a beating, She's on the phone. She goes, Jim, uh, I just really needed to call you and thank you because my daughters have a safe place to do their homework now. So it was pretty remarkable. I got a lot of kids. It had a lot of impact on me. And I decided I wanted to find out how to do that on purpose instead of by accident. And that's really what a lot of this is about. Most people do renovation transactions transactions on older properties, properties that are sold as is, and they do them by mistake. They do them trying to fix what's going on. So uh, we, what, we wanted to change that. And we paid attention to this all through the years. So that was 88. I started a little company in New Jersey called K Mortgage, which you remember. Uh, I got on HUD's lender committees when they changed the 203K in the 90s. We were one of five lenders represented on that committee and actually participated in writing some of the mortgagee letters. So we really got embedded into the regulations and studied them and have done that ever since, but not just 203K, it's other programs as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So, so what I'm saying is there's a lot of experience that has gone into building this information. Today, we're going to give you a, a, an introduction, an overview of fixed agent and all of the steps that we use to successfully, one, close on time, two, help our homeowners through the process of renovation right to the completion of the project. That's the important time because that's when you get more referrals, right? So, so I hope that makes sense to everybody. We're gonna spend uh, a little bit of time on that. We're gonna go through this PowerPoint. So uh, here's the objectives. Uh, one, again, <clears throat> 
of our fixer upper agent class. It's a three hour class. New Jersey has the CE credits. In other states, we hope you find it has valuable substantive information for you uh, without the CE credits. It's, and in New Jersey, so you can take this class and get three CE credits instead of an ethics class, I hope you find that this is more interesting. In the, our objectives are to uncover more inventory opportunities and sell more homes. Older homes, homes that need updates or repairs, bank REO often are not properties that buyers find in their dreams and they tend to pass them by. They're not a, a, a viable inventory a lot of times and they should be. With a clear vision and the right process, these properties can become affordable home ownership opportunities. So in our class, we show the details of that process that you can go through. And, and I'll tell you right now, it starts before the first sales conversation because you want, to, you want someone to have the understanding and the vision of what is possible if the home they're looking at is not the one they've been dreaming about. You can find more buyers who can buy. Qualified buyers fail to find that perfect home that they have been dreaming of at a price point they can afford. Then they get stuck in the first scene of Property Brothers for six months, become discouraged and drop out of the market. Let's prevent that. Let's keep those interested buyers and let's help them find affordable opportunities that can help them. We'll talk a little bit, and you and I talked sure. a little bit this morning, our pre-approval needs to have one more piece, and it's the plan to improve. It just adds an option into what your buyers are able to achieve. It adds an option that they can take advantage of. We can develop and demonstrate more home ownership opportunities, review the buyer's goals and their uh, highest and best use of potential properties to reach the desired objectives. We can convert dreams into reality plans. We can help buyers recognize the opportunity to build equity. You know, one of the things I've done over the years is track our pipeline. Yeah. Uh, and we look at the equity buildup after somebody buys a fixer upper. And over the years, the average over thousands of properties over 30 some years uh, is over 17%. Right now, because of what values are doing, it's a little different. It's 13 to 50, <laughs> but it means you can buy a house and immediately pick up some equity right at the closing wow. table. It's really pretty substantial. And uh, so let's look at the opportunity to begin with. Right now, uh, you guys on the phone, you know more about uh, inventory than we do. The active listing counts are down. Uh, you can see the 2021 numbers are not getting any better in the active listing count, we're at a lower point right now than any time in the last 20 years. And that's at a time where demand is growing. Right. So the reduction in inventory, the increase in demand, that's what's happening to sales prices, right? Uh, newly listed homes, same thing. The, the volume of newly listed homes is down pretty dramatically. We don't have to tell anybody on the phone that that's the case in each of our markets, I'm sure. And the realities of the buyer's feeling right now, buyer's fatigue, the record price appreciation that they're seeing, it, it, they're afraid. We need to help them understand what's going on, what's going on with the appreciation. It's gonna continue, but not at such a dramatic rate, but it will continue. So you can't immediately looking at just surface information Make a decision, I'm afraid I'm going to wait till prices come down. Well, they're not going to come down. Right. Exactly. The increase in prices is just going to slow down. Right. 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 Extremely low inventory. That's correct. But we need to open up the inventory that maybe, maybe people aren't seeing as viable. Older homes, homes yeah. that need some work, not that dream home you can't find in the right price range. Record high percentage of sales over list price. You guys have all seen that happening. Record low days on the market. You know, that one's interesting to watch because you can see the immediate contract numbers yeah. in listings that do go on the market. And it really is a leading indicator that demand is continuing right. to stay high. And it's going to continue to be that way. Historically low mortgage rates. Now, everybody's reading the headlines right now. <laughs> rates are going up, right? 
Okay, so for the last 30 years, guess what's been happening? Rates have been going down. Since right. 1981, yeah. when I was a loan officer in Virginia Beach, the interest rate was 17 and a half. Yeah. Since then, rates have been going down. Yes, they hit a low point of less than three, yeah. and now they're up closer to four. But look at the range of the rates. We're still in a really great place. Yeah. And again, if people are seeing the headline, rates are going up, I'm afraid I'm going to stay out of the market. Well, wait a second. Yeah. You're going to lose money by doing that, and we can show you those calculations. Yeah. So you got to give people more information. Yep, exactly. Jim, excuse me sure. for one second. There's people in the waiting room somewhere. Jesse oh, keeps texting. Okay. I don't know how to get back to that. Hang on a minute. Sorry, guys. Okay, let's uh, uh, let's see if I got to. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it or whether we have to go back to you being the mm. host. So, um, I don't. Know. Jesse, how many people are? Huh? Did I get you the gloves, babe? Okay. Um, I know at least one person's in there. All right, let's see if I can figure this out. Me too. We have Liz waiting on there. I have Kristen. Hit participants. Can you hit the see the arrow? Oh yeah. Uh, no. Okay. So what we're going to do is let's go for another couple of minutes. Yep. And then we'll pause for a few minutes. Uh, give everybody a break for a second. And we'll get back into here. Okay. We'll redo that. Okay. So let me just keep a couple of things going. And then we'll pause and let other people get back in. So uh, you also know that, and, and this speaks to that interest rate topic we just talked about. Homes are less affordable, not unaffordable. And this information, this slide right here comes from Keeping Current Matters. And I know a lot of you follow them. They have great information. You can pull off these slides and use them. They're a great description of you know, the different things we're up against. You also can see that rent is not the place to go. If somebody's afraid of interest rates, afraid of price, show them this because they should be afraid of where the rent is gonna go. And you can give them the information that will be more helpful, okay? So I'm gonna go to this slide and get you to think about it for a minute. And we're gonna get back and try to, uh, um, Try to let the other people in. Okay. So I got to get your. You got to reclaim host. Reclaim right? the host. Yep. I don't see where they're waiting. All right. Yeah. Ah, there we go. In middle. There got we go. it. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, they should all be in. Oh, or get, or they're back. invited to come in. 56. Let's see okay. if I still have the screen. I do. Okay. Okay. So that's good. All right. So I think we let everybody in, you guys. Uh, maybe we'll try that again in another 15 minutes just to make sure we can. Uh, catch any stragglers that uh, may be signing in. So uh, rent is not the way to uh, go. If you're afraid of interest rates and you're afraid of pricing, you should be afraid of the rent. Absolutely. However, when you do uh, uh, help a buyer uh, that has been qualified, mm -hmm. go out and take a look at those houses they have been dreaming of. This is what you, what you might find. So uh, great house, real nice, right? Real nice. Yeah. But when you find that house they've been dreaming of, it, there's a lot to worry about in the pricing at times. This is where we talk about finding the dream home and getting stuck in the Property Brothers uh, scene for six months because you simply can't afford that house. Mm -hmm. So then you take somebody out to find a home that they may be, may be able to and it brings up all kinds of questions. We're going to look at this example uh, again in a minute, but when you take somebody to find what they can afford when they find jealousy windows and masonry <laughs> steps and iron railings and a, a bad paint job and uh, chipping paint and a, a roof that's got to be replaced again it's fear yeah. right it's fear so how do you 
how do you change fear into good preparation? That's the question. And how do you make that work in your transaction? Well, uh, you skate to where the puck's going to be. Get prepared. That's what you do about fear. You prepare. It, uh, skate to where the puck is going to be, not to where it has been. So let's talk about preparing. How can you do that? Let's run through the examples, run through the opportunities again, so that we can kind of get this in perspective, if you will, right? Yeah. So if you look at uh, Monmouth County, New Jersey, and these same numbers uh, uh, proportionately are similar in most areas. In Monmouth County, New Jersey, 86.5% of the property is 30 years old. Wow. So if we're talking about how do we cure inventory issues, we all know that it's got to come from existing housing, right? right. Uh, God bless the builders and trying to build more homes, but they have a lot of challenges with labor, material costs, all kinds of things. And since we have been underbuilt for the last 20 years, right. it's going to take a while to catch up. Yeah. So, so the, the, the fix to inventory has got to come from existing homes. I do. Homes are older and they continue to get older. I'm at home um, on Zoom class with the, no, it's okay. The guy is not getting to the point of the matter, so. There we go. All right, Larry, I need another uh, thumbs up on our audio. Can you hear us okay? Good. So 60% of the property in Monmouth County is 50 years old or older. That's a simple demonstration of the, the, the existing property is older property. The, the inventory that you might be able to get to list and become inventory is older. Well, if you list it as is or cash only when it's an older property, that needs work, who are you appealing to? You're appealing to only a very small percentage of the population. Right. That's not where we want to be. We want more opportunity than that. You know, as an example, again, in Monmouth County, a higher income earner is somebody who could pay cash, pay cash for the right. improvements, right. hold on to the property until they sell it, uh, et cetera. Nope, somebody said they can't hear us. Larry, you can still hear us? All right, give me a thumbs up if you can hear us. Okay, so um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue. By offering purchase renovation financing solutions, we can dramatically expand the potential buyer population. Okay, it's just that simple. Instead of just investors who have cash, the, the biggest potential buying population Millennials can buy any property in any condition. And if you look at this, uh, 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 again, Monmouth County, uh, this is uh, uh, family income levels. Those levels with the greatest percentages, that's where your buyer population is today. It's in those population income levels. That's where the majority of the people are and where you can expand your potential buying population. So, so let's talk about uh, that population. Are they interested in fixture uppers? Uh, in a competitive market, millennials are willing to bet on riskier homes. Fierce competition for homes may be pushing millennials to expand their house hunting criteria. Millennials are undaunted by homes that need major repairs. 71% right now say that they would be willing to purchase a fixture upper. Would you be willing to buy a fixer upper? You can see on this chart and the differences between 2019 and now, that number is up. Wow. 71% of millennials would be willing to buy a fixer upper. They need us to help them. They need us to help them with the right planning. They need us to help them with the right products and process. So let's, let's give you an overview of what we talk about in our three hour class. So uh, this is about uh, uh, renovation loan solutions, okay? Hang on, we got somebody coming in the waiting room, got them. So uh, these are the peripheral benefits of all renovation loans. We're not gonna go through the detail of 203K, home style choice renovation, et cetera, 
These are the peripheral benefits of all of those programs. Fixer upper opportunities give any qualified buyer. This is not a bond program where you have to fix fit into a window of income. Any qualified buyer at any income level can buy a home that needs improvement, whether it's repair, renovation, or remodeling. They can find an affordable solution to buy homes that are discounted because of their age, condition, or status. Again, not just that blown out perception of 203k. With a renovation loan, home buyers can borrow both the purchase money and renovation funds in a single mortgage loan and close as is. That's very important, Jim. The close as, as is, is is so important because how many agents out there have had a house and just you can't get a regular mortgage on it. This is the only loan, correct? Absolutely. That we can close as is. Very important. This is the very only important. loan type where you can do that. Right. And it is because of the structure of the loan. Right. We're lending on the purchase and the renovation of the property. When we close, and I'm going to show you this in a minute in the math, uh, that money goes to pay off the seller and goes in the bank for the improvements. Right. Yep. Down payment can be as little as 3%. 3% is on the uh, uh, conventional programs, home style and choice renovation. When it's a first time home buyer that fits into the uh, income guidelines for those programs. The other programs, FHA is three and a half percent down for anybody. The conventional programs are five percent down for anybody. So it works for anybody who has this opportunity. Right? This is not your father's 203k. So please don't think of this as just a 203k. It is not. If you just simply remember these peripheral benefits, it's about all loans that we that we have in our inventory. Fannie Mae home style, home style with renovation, home style investor, fix it mortgage investor, FHA 203K, 203K limited. How do I write up the contract? We'll get to Larry, that. Larry, hang on to that because I actually have an example towards the end. Fix it jumbo. We have a jumbo program that goes yeah. to a million dollars. Uh, all of those programs are contained in our brand fix it mortgage. So the one thing, Jim, I want to be clear on is, and I don't know if you heard this agents and we can do a renovation loan for an investment property. Yes. Yes. That is it's phenomenal. Not, yeah. So if one of these agents has a, an investor yes. that basically has no more money left because they've invested it yep. or a little bit of money left, sure. whatever, sure. they're able to do an investment renovation loan. Absolutely. So, 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 here's, so let's talk about that for a minute. Okay. Because right now people don't know that, right? Yep. Yep. So the investors that are going to go out and this single family only, yep. but the investors that go out to buy homes now, they're getting money from hard money lenders, yes. right? Yep. So what's the interest rate? I don't know, 10 or 10 12. 10% with five right? points. With yeah. five points. Sure. So you don't really have a lender. You have a partner. Right. right. Okay. So instead of that, a Fannie Mae home style or Freddie Mac choice renovation. Mm -hmm. can, and, and by the way, you can go up to 85% loan to value. Wow. Okay. And it's a market interest rate. And you don't have a partner. And you can borrow the purchase plus the renovation funds. That's awesome. It is much better leverage yeah. than a hard money lender. There's no question yeah. about that. Debbie had a question. Uh, I know we're going to get to them. What does what purchaser does... need to do to get money released from the escrow? That's I'll a show good... you that in a minute. Too. Great question, Debbie. Yeah. We're going to get to that. It's so simple with us. You'll yeah. see. We You'll make see. it easy for people because we've had 30 years practice. Right. Right. All right. So. The repairs or improvements are done after the loan is closed. You can close as is on time. There's another perception. You can never close these on time. It takes right. 90 days. Right. That's not true. Our average turnaround time is 43.5 days. It's terrific. You can close them in less than 45, but you got to follow the right process. Right. And you have to have experts involved. That's what we do uh, here. We have a team of experts. How can we close as is? With the uninsured uh, sure. insurance. The insurance question. Great, great question. You can always get insurance. Yeah. Because if you can't get homeowners, you substitute that during construction with builder's risk. Okay. You can always get homeowners. 
And, and again, I'm, I'm simply giving you what we have learned with 30 years practice. Okay. Okay. So we'll answer that question a little bit more if we need to, but yep. you can absolutely get insurance for that property. Definitely. Yep. The repairs and improvements done after the loan is closed. At closing, the seller is paid. An escrow is established. It is for primary owner-occupied one to four family units. Yep. Second homes are mm -hmm. single family only. Yep. And investment property, single family only. The primary one to four includes mixed use. Okay. 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 So you got to remember that in many areas, mixed use property literally is the cornerstone of some uh, neighborhoods and we can help somebody buy that mixed use property. Okay. So let me show you this quickly, which is uh, really an overview of the mathematics. And again, similar to those bullet points I just showed you, they're the peripheral benefits of all renovation loans. This math, this formula is the same formula for all renovation loans. Okay. You know, there's differences in the LTV, of course. Right. Uh, but when you look at the math, it's, it's the same, right? So it begins with uh, the sales price plus repairs. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you about that 20% in a second. But for every realtor on the phone, you do a property analysis of some sort on every property you sell because you don't want your buyer to be underwater, right? So you're going to be thinking about this, whether you do formally or not. It's sales price plus repairs equals the total investment compared to the after improved value. Now, the important part of this, and we dig much deeper into this when we do our three hour class, mm -hmm. we dig into the repair number and where it comes from and the after improved value and that. But let me give you a snapshot. This is called the property analysis again sales price plus repairs. Well, any property, any property whether it's old property or just needs a new kitchen or you have somebody walk in that says, I want to move that wall and put in a new kitchen, open concept, all of those things, there's a ballpark number in somebody's head. Right. That's what we're looking for here. We're looking for just that first ballpark number. In a bank REO property, it's in the BPO. Okay. And, and, there, and all the realtors on the phone, you know what a BPO is, the broker price opinion on a foreclosed property has a list of and cost to cure, okay? So that repair number is available somehow, whether it's from you, the realtor, because you know how much it costs to put in a kitchen or put on a new roof and get in the ballpark, or you know a contractor who can run over to the house and we'll give you some answers, yeah. right? somebody's got a repair number. Sales price plus repairs. That 20% is a factor that we use uh, for the contingency reserve and the ancillary fees, inspection fees, title rundown, different things that are characteristic of every renovation loan. So it's sales price plus repairs equals the total investment. You compare the total investment to the after improved value. Now, for a property that needs a lot of work, how do I know the after improved value? Well, you do, because you can just do a comparative market analysis as if the property were improved, which is exactly what we're going to do when we get to the appraisal. Yep. You can do it because you know the number of bedrooms and bathrooms, you know where the school is, you know the neighborhood market values, you can do a CMA in 10 minutes. <clears throat> so that's the property analysis. Sales price plus repairs, total investment, compared to the after improved value, make sure your homeowner is not going to be underwater. Simple as that. On the other side, when we pre-approve someone, we want to have a little deeper conversation and prepare for them to improve. So the focus changes slightly. It changes from just focusing on the income and going to the maximum mortgage amount and go buy a house for that amount of money. Right. We focus on the loan amount, okay? The loan amount represents sales price plus repairs. So for you guys on the phone, if you get somebody pre-approved for, I don't know, $350,000, you can't find them their dream home. So you're gonna go out and look at cheaper properties. Keep this in mind. Don't buy a house for 350, look at 250 and 300, where you're gonna move a wall and put in that new gourmet kitchen. It's the loan amount that represents the sales price plus repairs. 
Got okay. It. So that's the simple change in focus, focus on the loan amount and what it represents to begin to have the conversation about, you can put in a new kitchen and you begin the conversation so that someone has a different vision when they walk into the I Love Lucy kitchen with the orange countertops and avocado appliances. Right, right. They'll be able to see a prettier kitchen than they might be able to enjoy. Okay? Terrific. Now, let's take the math and talk about the trail of the money. And this will answer the question of the escrow and how you get to right. the money. Right. When we close at the closing table, the credits in the transaction, of course, are the loan amount uh, and the down payment, okay? So we close as is. Remember the math, the sales price plus repairs times the LTV plus the down payment. We're gonna pay off the seller. The real estate professional is paid. You go find another family for us to help. And then the repair money goes into an escrow account for the homeowner. It's just that simple. And they get to the escrow by a simple process of inspections and draw requests. Now, sometimes people perceive that to be a problem, but when you've had 30 years experience, it's like anything else, there's a recipe, there's a process. And we do that all by ourselves at advisors. It's not farmed out to somebody else. Right. So we're in control of that whole transaction right from the pre-approval through the process, the draw process through the closing, right. through the draw process to the end of the project, because we want the, the, the millennial new homeowner sitting on the front steps in front of their brand new front door, taking a picture so we can, we can help them and help you. So Jim, just to clarify that. So we at advisors here, unlike some of the bigger banks are yep. in charge of everything from the very beginning to letting the, we, we control when the draws get released. Correct. And we do it. We hold everything. Correct. Wow. Okay. Yes. That's a big thing. Yes. Builder risk in Florida. Builder risk in Florida. You do have builder risk in Florida. We, I, I know because we've done projects in Florida. What is the review process for evaluating the repair budget? There's a three-step process. The first is getting in the ballpark, like I explained, and that is getting a budget. So you're just in the ballpark. You're not on the pitcher's mound. You get in the pitcher's mound by a system of inspections with a construction consultant and planning with the contractor. And we have people on our team that support you, yes. Yes. that support the, all of our realtors and homeowners, and we take them by the hand and help them through that process. Right. Again, we dig very deeply into that process in our three-hour class. Is the repair budget the same rate as the mortgage? Okay, so there's really two questions there. Yep, yep. Is the repair budget the same rate as the mortgage? This is one loan. This is one fully funded loan, purchase plus repair money, okay? So it's not two loans, don't misinterpret that. Somebody's borrowing all of the money when they go to the closing table, right? right? right. Pay off the seller, put it in escrow. Is the, is, is the rate? Yes, it's the same for all of the money. Yeah. And I'll jump ahead because the next question is, what is what's the rate? the rate? Right, what's the rate? Yes, it's higher. Right. But this is not a subprime loan. Right. This is a market rate loan and it rides about a half percent higher right. in the rate. Right. So if we're at 4%, <clears throat> we're looking at around four and a half. Right. Keep so in now, mind the, out, the added value proposition is giving somebody the opportunity to buy a house that's priced less, yep. per, discounted yep. because of its condition. That's where your added value opportunity is. Right. Remember there's always, and I can only mm -hmm. tell you this from my 30 years experience, there's always a pickup in equity. Right. And, and I'll tell you honestly, that rate conversation is usually the last one we have. Right. Because when they find out they can buy that house, at a price within their budget, and they can put in the new kitchen, or even, by the way, a new pool in the backyard, right. Right. then uh, then they want to have the conversation, right. right? The last part of that question that was important, is it sold to Fannie or Freddie? Yes. Yes, depending on what loan you're <laughs> right. doing, it's right. Fannie, Freddie, or FHA, Ginny. Right. But yes, it is a Fannie or Freddie option we have, and there is a, also the 203K, which is FHA. So, so I want to 
take that to a sidebar for a second. Sure. Here's the important part about fix it mortgage, because uh, this question, yes, it's sold to Fannie or Freddie. We make that decision later in the transaction. Right. Right. If you try to make those kinds of decisions in the beginning of a transaction, you may often get in the wrong box. Right. Okay. So our process in fix it mortgage is to do the pre-approval. Yeah. So we understand someone's qualifying makeup, right? Mm -hmm. Are you an FHA borrower or, or a conventional borrower? Right. Uh, are you a Fannie Mae borrower that's got two tax, two years tax returns, or are you a Freddie Mac borrower that needs one, one tax year. return? Yeah. So there's a lot of variables that we're going to sort through. And again, in our three hour class, we'll give you, we'll go a little deeper on yeah, that. Yeah. Um, I know from speaking to you in the past, I've called Jim with several of those questions and their, their team is very good at putting that person into the correct box based yeah. on the information that we give them. This guy can go FHA, this guy can do, you know, whatever conventional. So uh, they're very good at doing that. What do we have? Here? I just want to check and see if we have anybody in the waiting room. I don't and believe we don't. so. Okay, we're good. Guys, can um, you make sure everybody's muted? There's some background noise coming through. Okay. Yeah. There's also a uh, there's also another question that just popped up. I know we're probably getting ahead of okay. ourselves. Uh, All right. I think that should be good. Larry. The repairs for estimates and repairs themselves have to be done by a licensed contractor. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so I'm going to answer that question quickly yep. Yep. today because we have a limited amount of time, but I'll again tell you in our three hour class, we dig real deeply into that Okay. because, and here's how I'll answer it today. If somebody wants, if someone says to us, can I do my own improvements? The answer is no, unless you are a professional contractor. Yeah. And in each of our products, there are different terms and conditions to that answer. Okay. So there are levels of uh, 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 the, uh, the amount of repairs you can do and, and how you can work the task of the general contractor. But uh, typically, again, for Joe homeowner to say, I want to do my own improvements, the answer is no. Right. But we have a lot of experience in answering that question and helping the homeowner get to yes. Got you. Okay. So. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's close yeah, that up that again. Up to the top. Up on the top, you click the box out. There you go. There, there we go. go. Yep. Okay. So that's the math. Keep that math in mind. And again, uh, we dig a lot deeper into that in the three hour class. So I want to talk about two main topics now, the listing or seller, yep. uh, the listing agent, Oh, getting more inventory, right? And then we're going to talk about buyers. This is important. Do you close with a temporary CO, Cheryl's question? No, we don't need a CO at all. We don't need all. a CO at all. No temporary CO, no CO inspection, no CO to close. So it, listing opportunities, let's talk about that because people awesome. don't often see the, the, the solutions yep. in renovation loans at a listing appointment, right? Yep. So we're all looking for listings. Uh, understand the buyer pool. And, and here's what we mean by that. If you're going out to try to develop listings and you're going to existing homes that uh, are older, right? Every neighborhood's got older, long, older homes. So right now, and I know there's a lot of information right now about uh, the return on certain projects that you should consider if you're considering selling your home. There's a lot of it on keeping current matters. And some of that information uh, drives the uh, potential seller to the realtor to get some good advice. So here's one issue. If, if that house that, uh, that the retired couple is in and they're moving to Florida from New Jersey right. and they've never updated their kitchen. So it's gonna be the I Love Lucy kitchen, right? right. So you're going to walk in and you're going to uh, uh, typically you're going to have a conversation about you got to do some updates. So if you look at information about the return on updating your kitchen, the return on the dollar is really between 47 and 57 percent. Wow. So if I'm the retired couple right. and by the way, I'm not old enough to be retired yet. <laughs> So, <laughs> so if I'm the retired couple, I'm going to sit there and I'm thinking to myself, wait a second. Uh, 
I'm going to spend $25,000 on updating this kitchen and you're going to only be able to get me $12,000 back. Why would why I do would that? Do right. I don't know. I don't know why I would want to spend that money. So, so it's great if you can have that done and you, and you, and you improve your listing, that's terrific. Right. But what I'll get you to think about as we have this conversation is how about instead of that, we modify your marketing so that you can market that house to the people coming to look at it. And the marketing can say something like, uh, make this house your own. Uh, put in your own new kitchen. Right. So, what, so you want to have that conversation with the seller because the seller wants to know that you have a better marketing plan than the next guy. That's fantastic for, right? the, for the agents. Exactly. Absolutely. And we can help them with that through White Street Marketing, which exactly. is a whole other topic. We're yep. going gonna to show you some of our marketing materials, but remember that conversation. Yep. We're having a conversation with the seller and we're not going to try to convince them to spend $25,000. We're going to convince the seller we can sell that house better than the next guy. All right. So when you list a house that needs work without asking for a complete overhaul, big money, think about these things. Here's seven things that will help you. Understand your buyer pool. Who's going to buy the fixer upper? The millennials population is the biggest. 71% mm -hmm. of them would buy a house that needs repairs, a fixer upper. The investor community, much smaller community, right. but they'll buy the house, yep. right? Clean up, do clean up the yard. Do the small stuff. Call the call the uh, neighborhood teenagers that have the yard service and get them to do the the small dollar stuff. Clean up the yard. Make small updates. Do some painting. Tighten up the doors. Things like that. Focus on the features your home already has and highlight those that can be updated. Those that can be updated. Mm -hmm. You don't need to spend the twenty five thousand dollars. Highlight the size of the room at the kitchen and take down the wall and highlight the benefits that you could improve, okay? Make sure you price the home right. Obviously, you have to do that on, on every potential listing that you go visit. Educate yourself and the seller on the ways the renovation loan solution can increase the buyer pool, okay? So you're going to increase the buyer pool by making it attractive to more buyers. The millennials that aren't afraid, if you give them the financial solution to solve the problem, to get rid of the fear, to get them prepared, no, you don't have to worry about how much this is going to cost because we're going to be able to get that new kitchen in your budget. Okay? Help the buyer choose the colors, pick the new cabinets and countertops. Yep. Get, them Get them thinking. Get them thinking, right? Yep. That's the conversation to have with a seller. You're going to be able to help buyers change the vision, vision skate to where the pop's going to be. Right. Okay? So what every seller needs to know about renovating this year, this is that conversation we're having about the kitchen, right? If you're planning to sell this year, you're probably thinking about what you'll need to do to your house to get ready, spend the money or not. Just get better prepared. Do come up with a list of projects that you can tackle, those things that may not be that expensive. And as you can see, this comes directly from Keeping Current Matters. What every seller needs to know about renovating, the number of homes for sale is very low. So do those things that make sense. Improve the marketability of your loan. Buyers may be willing to take on projects when they purchase your home. Let's highlight that. Let's highlight the opportunity to do that. But don't leave it at just that sentence. And, and here's my message about the Keeping Current Matters information. I think we can uh, add to that information. We can add an option that you're able to offer a seller. Add the option that you're able to offer a buyer. Don't just stop at these sentences. Your agent will help you spotlight the updates, upgrades that you have made. So, so this is your conversation, agents, that you can have with the buyers that may enhance your opportunity without making them spend a lot of money. Again, millennials are flocking to buy fixer-uppers because it's the way some can afford to buy their home, right? All of that information, the Bank of America research showed that that 
percentage rather than 71% was actually 82% wow. say they're more likely to buy a fixer upper than a newly built home. Okay. So let's give them that chance, give them those solutions to be able to, to buy those houses. In a competitive market, millennials are willing to bet on risk your homes. We, we looked at this one, we know that percentage is high. Let's give them what they're able to do. This is right from Freddie Mac, breathing new life into old, buying fixer uppers and distressed homes. It again speaks to the wisdom of looking at existing real estate, buying fixer uppers and fixing them. And, and people are willing to do that. The benefits of buying a fixer upper or distressed home, lower purchase price, less competition. You decide on the improvements. You decide on the projects that are the most important, which will take priority. You call the shots. And, and I again, encourage you to think about these bullets from the perspective of the seller and the home buyer, okay? From the perspective of the seller, maybe lower purchase prices and certainly not the way to put it, but the, a, a fair purchase price, less competition, People are out there looking for their dream homes. Yes, yours is a little bit older. We can make it as attractive if someone comes in, we can give them the vision of that dream home. You decide on the improvements. You decide on making the smaller dollar improvements to sell your home, but make the marketing of those high dollar uh, improve like the kitchen, make it more attractive to the buyer coming in to purchase the property. You call the shots. So it works, that conversation works for the seller and the buyer. These are the, uh, the bullets uh, to our class, three hour class, okay. okay? Homework and buyer preparation is really the first one. Find and recognize good property opportunities. And again, we dig very deeply into these in the three hour class. Sure. And I'll explain, find and recognize good property opportunities they aren't all good opportunities. Right, of course. Lots of houses are in bad shape that your first time home buyer should not be getting into. Make those decisions you know, before you uh, have that sales conversation. Understand your buyer's potential to perform. It starts with pre-approval, yeah. right? Yeah. Anybody can do a pre-approval. Yeah. I'll, I'll do respect to you, my yeah, friend. Well, that's, you're right. <laughs> Anybody can do a pre-approval, right? right? right. Let's also have that conversation about a plan to improve. Right. If you go out and look at older properties, know that you can have this option available if you want to, right after you close, put in that new kitchen. Identify the right solution and partner with the right experts. That's us, right? Yeah. You got to have a ver you got to have a variety of uh, solutions. And PowerPoint, yes. Larry just asked the question, can we share this PowerPoint? Yes, we can. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, and we'll be happy to do that. Identify the right solution, partner with the right experts. My point here is lots of lenders do renovation loans. It's certainly up to you for, for who you choose. But if you choose somebody that says no problem, you got a problem, <laughs> right? right. So it is a little different. You got to have experts involved. That's what our team does. We support our salespeople, all of them on the phone today, and we support you. We have a half a dozen people in our team that does nothing but support our renovation transactions. So let's look at this one a little bit. Oh, I, uh, sorry, I don't have the, uh, uh, what do you call that when you, uh, the, you advance the oh, pictures yeah, 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 in, yeah, yeah, yeah. animation, animation set. Yeah. So I apologize for that. Here is our example I showed you a minute ago, right? At the top, okay? That's the same house. There's the kitchen that someone would walk into when you went to the open house. And in most transaction, somebody walks into that kitchen, what happens? Oh, forget it. You turn around and walk forget out, it. right? Yeah. Yeah. You turn around and walk out and, and you don't even talk about it. So let's talk about it, right? Let's give someone the vision that they could actually develop this property with this kitchen and be very happy in their own dream home. And the numbers behind that are this property sold for $150,000. Uh, 
the renovations were 50. The after improved value was 250. Our buyer picked up $50,000 $50, right away. Yep. yep. And it's a very standard example, if you will. The point here is buyers looking at older homes, fixer uppers, we need to help them see that nicer dream home that they can develop themselves. Find and recognize good property opportunities, this being the example. You may ride by it and not think it's viable inventory, but it certainly is. The pre-sale, understand your buyer's potential to perform that pre-approval and uh, uh, making sure you have a conversation about the added option and the plan to improve if it's not just the way you like it as you uh, take that first look. And, and, and I'll say to, to you guys on the phone, the time to have that conversation is before you take somebody out to look for property. Just have a short conversation about, you know, uh, we're gonna go out and look for your dream home uh, in your price range, but we may be looking at some older properties. Would you be interested if you can put in that new kitchen right away? That's a great way. Right. To it. So it gets someone prepared right in the beginning. Prepare your buyer's vision, expectations, and ability. Get a pre-approval with a plan to improve. Can I just stop you right there, Jim? Sure. Just add really quickly to that. That's such a great point you make. You know, a lot of inventory being so low, I know from agents that I work with and a lot of my team works with, we keep hearing it's not only inventory, not any inventory, right. but you may, we pre-approve some people for, let's say $500,000 or 400,000, and there's nothing that they can find that they like, but you know, why not take them down maybe to the 335 or the 350 range exactly. and have that money in there. We know they can afford it and, and build the house, add that extra bedroom, uh, you know, revamp the kitchen, uh, make all of those things done. So that's a, it's such a great loan. And it's such a, you know, it's a concept that I think if our agents that we work with can, can grasp, boy, they're going to open up a lot of, a lot of doors where they didn't have before. I agree. A lot and of doors. There are added value opportunities, yeah, tons of both it. in the listing for right. the uh, selling, for the listing realtors yes. and for the selling yes. realtors. Listings also very important. But yep. you know, it's, it, it's like a lot of other things. You know, I've been doing this and talking about these for 30 years, but most lenders don't. Yep. So uh, our community, the, the, yes. our industry has done a bad job yep. of communicating this information. Right. Exactly. And it's just that people don't know about it and don't know about the opportunities. Okay. So things that we have learned, suggested talking points, and I would I would love to have suggestions from from our realtors here. Yeah. If you were able to buy an older home, obviously you're talking to your uh, to your home buyer before you're going out. Sure. If you were able to buy an older home at a good price and add that new gourmet kitchen you're talking about, would you be interested? Well, the buyer is going to say yes yeah. because it's really what he wants. He wants a new kitchen. Sure. Right. If you were able to add updates right away, would you consider this home? So you're in a house and somebody says, man, I'd like this neighborhood. My uncle lives down the street, uh, but this kitchen stinks. Yep. Well, if you were able to add a new kitchen right along with your purchase of this loan, would you consider this home? What do you think the answer is going to be? Of course, it's going to be yes. It's going to give you the chance to have the sales conversation instead of walking away quietly. Special financing is available on this house that will allow you to add the cost of updates you need. You can make this a great home for your family. Yes, you can remove that wall and update the kitchen. Everybody on this phone has had that conversation. Sure. Yep. yep. Well, I want to move that wall and blow out this the kitchen, wall, but, but I don't have $30,000. Yep. yep. You can remove the wall and update the kitchen, and we can help you get the cost added right into your mortgage. Those are suggestions. What are the max and minimum amount of repairs? Thanks, Larry. So the maximum, the minimum amount of repairs, there is no minimum. Because in our programs, we have programs that will allow you to do the new paint job and a new roof, if that's all the house needs. Mm -hmm. And there is no maximum other than the transaction maximum, the loan limit maximum, okay? Right. So, you know, hypothetically, you get lucky and you buy a house for a dollar at a tax sale and your neighborhood uh, uh, loan limits are 500000 
you can put $499,000 into the improvements. There's no minimum and no maximum within the loan limits, okay? <clears throat> okay, here's the answer to the contract. Ah, beautiful. So the answer to the contract is, and we always get this question in the beginning, uh, how do I write the contract for a renovation loan? You write it like every other sales contract. Right? You don't worry about the renovations. You don't worry about the project within your sales contract. Your sales contract is just the sales contract. In this example, this gentleman bought the house for $597,500. $1,000 down, $1,000 additional, regular mortgage amount, regular down payment. Yep. We simply lent him more money. Right. It's just that simple. Right. So their sales right. contract has nothing to do with adding on the other money. Nothing. So regular sales contract, nothing different about it, nothing to worry about. We handle it right. after that point. Just write the sales contract. Write it up. Fixer upper opportunities. Here's just, we're going to do a little bit of a review. Should Larry, this is your last question, buddy, because you're on, <laughs> right. You got a limit. Should the fact... I missed it because I was being a wise Jim, guy. Jim, I'm thinking like a realtor and I'm asking the questions. I know these are. We're going to get to them. They're better. Oh, well, I'll shut up and go away. Thank you. <laughs> Should the fact it's a rental loan need to be disclosed at the time of the offer? Doesn't necessarily need to be, right? Uh, in, a, in the case of FHA loans, it does have to say FHA 203K in the contract. Yeah. That can always be done by an addendum if we have to after the fact, but uh, I'll, I'll address that in, in, and again, simple terms. The sales contract is the sales contract, period. No, you're not required to disclose. You're going to loan the guy more money at the end of the day. Right. Okay. Thanks, Larry. But that was your limit, Tom. <laughs> okay. So let's review just real quick here at the end. Any qualified buyer, any income level, home buyers can close as is and borrow both the purchase and renovation funds in one mortgage loan, fully funded, one closing, okay? No certificate of occupancy is required to close. No temporary CO, no CO inspections are required, no CO to close. The down payment can be as little as 3%. So how do you get started? find and recognize good property opportunities. Remember the math, property analysis, sales price plus repairs after improved value. Understand your buyer's potential to perform. Qualify, qualification, the loan amount must include sales price plus renovation costs, okay? Just remember the math. Identify the right solution and partner with the right experts. We're here on the phone with you. Here's one, an example of one of the uh, marketing tools. Yep. This is a counter display, okay? Any of the loan officers can get these for you. Uh, uh, I would recommend you think about it two ways. And again, it's from our focus on uh, listing opportunities and sales opportunities. In a listing appointment, you can demonstrate you got a different plan. Uh, I'm gonna put this on the orange countertop in the kitchen <laughs> and it's gonna say home renovation and it has a pretty picture of the kitchen. It's going to start the buyers thinking, yep. and then it's going to say purchase plus renovations in one mortgage loan. The object here is to get that buyer to say, how do I get more information? Yep. That's the, uh, that's the, op that's the uh, opportunity you have from using it in a listing appointment. You can demonstrate to the seller, I've got a different marketing plan. There you go. Okay. To a buyer, obviously on the kitchen counter, it gives them the understanding that yes, you can buy a fixer upper. This is the takeaway we put on the counter yep. in front of the uh, display folder. Yes, you can buy a fixer upper. You can finance purchase money plus a paint job or a new roof or a kitchen or anything else you want to do. Okay. Uh, this is get a pre approval, include a plan to improve. Okay. At what point do you need a CO? At one point, thank you, Jay. Uh, we need a CO when the project is completed, and we will help the homeowner get to that. So I appreciate that question. It's not like we forget about them altogether. Right, we it's work that them. they are not 
you know, you know what CO means, right? Uh, a certificate of occupancy. Often people aren't going to occupy the property right right away, and we have the money for the improvements in the escrow. We don't need a CO to close, but we will need it at the end of the project, and we help the buyer through that process. Okay. So let and this again speaks to having that listing appointment. Let buyers make your home their own. Let them use their vision to pick new colors, cabinets, and countertops. With Fix It Mortgage, your buyer can buy it, fix it, and love it. It's a little different message. It may give you an advantage on that listing appointment. It may help you uncover more inventory. So program benefits to you as the realtor. You help young families find affordable homeownership opportunities. You raise real estate values by improving homes and neighborhoods, decrease foreclosure inventory, help buyers who previously could not buy because they can't find that dream home that's affordable, help sellers, owners with properties in outdated condition, give them a different marketing plan, promote an underutilized niche program that not many realtors or lenders understand. And after 30 years, that's discouraging, but that just is the yeah, way it is. The truth. People don't understand it. We can help you with that. And at the end of the day, if you make more money this year because of this, then I say, God bless you. Let's do more of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that is the presentation. Uh, and I would like you to just really uh, uh, consider. Uh, John raised his hand, but... Uh, I got to tell you, I'm not sure what to do about that. John, what's your question? You have a question, John. I, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I can unmute myself. Um, my question was, is, uh, is it, are we able to, if we have a website for a team or an agent um, site, are we allowed to do like a, a landing page to then put, you know, specific to this rental loan aspect that we could use then in a, um, in a listing presentation and pull it up like say on an ipad or something along those lines and then be able to do like before and afters for the seller and for the buyers uh so uh so yes is the answer to your to your uh, uh, question uh we actually have a fix it mortgage website yes uh we're we're loading and uh more uh before and after pictures right now we actually as a company just hired a website designer Okay. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to, you need to keep in touch with us yeah. so that we can help you with that over the next couple of weeks. We're very close to it okay. and, and we'll be able to give you that opportunity. I know, I know from just speaking with Jim, Jim has a lot of, uh, he just did a great clip down in where you seaside of an oh, actual, yeah. an actual yeah, project yeah. that is being done and where he shows the neighborhood and then turns it around. It's kind of dramatic how you did it. And then you see this beautiful house being done. It's an actual renovation loan being done. So if you speak to whoever your loan officer is, if that's something or there's things like that that can help you, I'm sure mm -hmm. they'll get that to you where you can actually show a client, hey, look at what this house was yeah. and look at what it's yeah. coming. Yeah. So that exactly. whoever your LO is, just get mm -hmm. in touch with them and, and we'll get you all that information. That's it. And, and you're absolutely right because our loan officers can send a link to that. Yes, video. exactly. I have it. I Good. Have it. Yep. Good. Yep. Great. Okay. Any other questions? Go to the chat box on the bottom, Jim. I think there's one waiting in the bottom. See where. I have a question. Okay. Hi. Um, so, how do we write up the offer? We write it up with a. Um... FHA loan, but we don't have no. to worry because. Well, that depends. Uh, here, uh, here, uh, I'll answer the question this way. Uh, again, generally, remember your sales contract is just the sales contract. If the buyer that you're representing, you know that they are an FHA buyer, if you've had the pre qualification done by one of our loan officers and you know that, you know, where the credit scores are and where the cash is, and yes, you've got an <laughs> FHA buyer then you're gonna write the offer as an FHA contract. Uh, if you know that they're going to add improvements into their financing, that yes, in the mortgage contingency clause, you're simply stating that it's an FHA 203K. You don't, have to make, you don't have to make any change. If it's a regular home sale, 
that's $350,000 and they're putting 10% down. That, that's, you just write your contract up the normal way. The, the other monies that are being added, we take care of that. Yep. So that gets added to the loan part of it, has nothing to do with your contract part of it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Teresa, just call me. Of course, Larry. You know well, Larry, he loves to ask questions. Let's call Larry. Let's call Larry for <laughs> anything. Couple of hands up. Uh, Diane, Diane, you have a question? Yes. Hi. Good afternoon. Um, in regards to the homeowners insurance, what would be the is it as normal or because we have outstanding uh, monies that would still be distributed for the improvements? Like, how does that work? Would it be the same? Yep. Here's how it works. In most cases, we get regular homeowners insurance because in most cases. You know, maybe we're redoing a kitchen or a new roof and a paint job. There are other cases where we're doing additions and larger projects where you're not able to get regular homeowners insurance because the property is not uh, isn't going to be occupied for a few months. Uh, again, most cases you get regular homeowners insurance, and again, uh, we'll help you with that as we move along in the process. Secondly, if you can't get regular homeowners insurance, then that insurance company, in most cases, will be able to offer a builder's risk plan, or yeah. the contractor in, uh, in the project would have their own insurance company yeah. to get builder's risk. And the builder's risk is a short-term policy during the project, and then it rolls right into regular homeowners, regular homeowners. insurance. And for the purposes of our escrow, we escrow for the regular homeowners. Got you. Okay, so we escrow for it. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Appreciate it. Welcome. You're Thank welcome, you. Diane. John, you have another question? Is your hand still up from before? John? We got your... No, uh, no, you my, my, my hand's still up from before. I'll take it down. Well, put it down. <laughs> You're going to get tired. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank, Thank you. Any other questions, guys? Dallas. Okay, so we're a little bit over our time. We always do. I want. I would like to just close to encourage all of you. Again, I mentioned a number of times, we dig deeper yes. into products, process, and go further into best practice sales activities we've seen over the years in our three-hour class. Uh, again, it, 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 our CE credits are available in New Jersey, three-hour CE. Uh, I apologize, it's not available in other states, but the information is where the value is. Right. I had another question just popped up on the there, John. Ah, oh, thank, thank you. you. All right. Well, that's it, guys. I want to thank you all for coming, Jim. I want to thank you for, Thanks for, for, having for me. being I here. Uh, again, encourage you all to be on the 16th, March 16th. You're going to get another Zoom link. And uh, you know, we're going to get into it a, a lot further. We're going to continue every month, your team, uh, your loan officers, we've all put together programs catered to agents trying to help you. Uh, we have a bunch of things planned at once a month going right on through to the, to the, to the future. Your, your loan officer will keep you aware of that and keep you in, involved. And we really, really do appreciate all your business and your time today, taking your time out of a busy day. And, you know, uh, we're here we're here to help you. Any questions you have, contact your loan officer. And uh, uh, thank you for coming. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Oh, oh great. Thanks. Thanks. All right, guys. Have a great thank day. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye, Bye Larry. Bye, Bye, Bye Teresa. Thanks. Guys. I'll see you soon. Thank you for soon. inviting me.